Cramer's rule uses determinants to solve systems of equations. Now we're going to start with two by twos. I'm sorry, we're going to start with systems of two equations. All right, first example. Okay, uh, let me introduce some words here. Or these are my. This is blah 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 blah. <laughs> this is my invention. Or invention is too strong a word. This is just me. I'm going to call this the x column or the x coefficients. I'm going to call this the y column, and I'm going to call this the constant column. Okay. Uh, technically, these aren't columns because of the way they are written. They're, these are in equations form. Maybe this year. This is normally called the x coefficients, the y coefficients, the um, constants. Okay, uh, but these are going to transfer over to columns in a matrix or a determinant. So I'm going to call them columns. So there are going to be three determinants that we're going to create. One is called dx. Okay, dx is going to be a determinant that is associated with the x variable. Okay. Now, what is ironic about this is that the x column is actually not part of this determinant. We're going to replace the x column with the constant column. And the y column is still part, is actually part of the determinant. Now, this will make more sense when you see the other determinants. So here, this is what? Negative or well, positive 10 plus 100. So that's 110. Now let's find dy. dy, I keep the x's, x column, which is 1, negative 4, and drop the y column and put that constant column in its place. So that's 20 minus 20, which is 0. Then we have what I call the d determinant. D is just the x and y without the constant column. So it's 1, negative 4, and negative 5, negative 2. So that's negative 2 minus 20, so negative 22. Okay? To get my answers, x, the value of x, is going to be dx over d dx is 110, d is a negative 22, reduce that, and I get negative 5. y is dy over d, so that's 0 over negative 22, making it 0. So final answer is negative 5, 0. Next example, we're going to look at some special cases for the 2 by All right, this is example 2. Uh, in this one, something strange happens. Well, let's see. We're first going to create our determinants. dx, which is negative, the constant column, the y column, find a determinant, negative 3 plus 3, 0 dy, dy, uh, what do we got here, the x column, constant column, produces the same, it's the same as dx, so we'll say it was there, d, x column, y column, same thing again, zero, all of these are zero, well, so what happens then? Well, x is dx over d, so this is 0 over 0. y is dy over d, this is also 0 over 0. When we have this, it turns out they're basically the same equation. So we say there are infinitely many solutions. They are basically the same line. If you look at this, 
Um, if you divide the second equation by negative 3, you get the first equation. So Cramer's rule, if you have this situation, uh, it's actually more tedious to actually find, to realize that. You, you can look at this by inspection that they are the same line. So there is some drawbacks. Next example. In example three, we also have another weird situation. Now, because of what we learned last time, okay, I want to find it in a different order. I want to find D first. And I'll explain why I want to find D. D, remember, is just the X column and the Y column. So it's negative 5, negative 2, 5, 2. This is negative 10 plus 10. It's 0. Here's what happens. Whenever the D determinant is 0, one of two things will happen. It will either be an infinitely many solutions or it will be no solutions. Let's find DX. If DX is not 0, if DX is not 0, then it will be no solution. Let's find out. Replace the X column with the constant column. Y column, 20 minus a negative 20, so that's 20 plus 20, it's 40. Okay, uh, it's not 0, 40 over 0 is undefined, I understand 0 over 0 is undefined, but this is definitely undefined, 40 over 0 is undefined, we say this has no solutions. Here in example four, we have three equations and three unknowns. Uh, there are some things I want to illustrate with this one. We're going to have a D, DX, DY, and a DZ. Uh, this is not going to fit on one paper. <laughs> D. And I'm also going to find determinants on the side. Uh, I'm, going to, I'm not going to work out the determinants on the video. It's going to just take too long if I do that. So you may, I'm going to be pausing in between while I calculate the determinants. All right, but anyway, D is going to be negative 2. I'm using the X column, negative 5. But in my third equation, there is no X. So if there is no X, the coefficient is 0. Going to the Y column, negative 5, negative 5, negative 4. Be careful, I almost blew that one. <laughs> okay, and then the Z column, 4, 1, negative 4. And then find the determinant. Okay, the determinant was 132. Dx. Uh, dx, so that means we get rid of the x column, put it in the constant column. So it's 21, 21, 8. With negative 5, negative 5, negative 4. 4, 1, negative 4. Turns out the determinant is negative 396. <laughs> yeah, I cheated. <laughs> dy. Keep the x's. Get rid of the y's. Put the constants in. Put in the z's. That turns out to be... I looked at the wrong one. DX is actually negative 132. You'll forgive me. Yes? Yes. DZ. Put the X column in. Negative 2. Negative 5. 0. Put the Y column in. Negative 5. Negative 5. Negative 4. Leave the z column out. Put the constant column in. And that turns out to be positive 132. Okay. Now that we have all the determinants, we can solve for each one. X is dx over d. So it's negative 132 over positive 132, making it negative 1. Y is dy over d. 
So it's negative 396 over 132, making it negative 3. And Z is DZ over D. So it's 132 over 132, which is 1. That's it. So final answer, negative 1, negative 3, 1. I, oops. I meant to put a parenthesis. Negative 1, negative 3, 1. Man, I make a lot of mistakes, don't I? Sorry. Bye-bye.